good afternoon, gentlemen at the computer. If you thought there was a PowerPoint, we had not gotten it. So that's why there is not a PowerPoint on that computer. If you need to send it to us, please send it to Joyce.Miller at TravisCountyTX.gov and I'll get it going. I'm sorry you're all there. My apologies, judge and court. Okay, good afternoon. Thank you, Judge. Um, just want to say about Judge Overstreet. Uh, he was the first African American elected to a statewide office in the history of Texas. Uh, he was from Amarillo, Texas. He um, he not only um, had a great practice, but before he had a practice, uh, he was also uh, twice elected to serve on the state's uh, highest criminal appellate court, which is the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals from 1990 to 1998. He authored over 500 opinions. Uh, he was a voice of reason. He was a voice of wisdom. Uh, he was easy to work with. He was kind and very generous. And, uh, and has guided and mentored a number of lawyers for years. And, uh, and I appreciate the court and the community for taking the time to recognize him. He really was a tall Texan who should always be remembered. Thank you. I had the pleasure of working with him a little bit, and I think around when I met you in the, in the mid-90s as well. He was a, a great inspirational person, a great mentor to me and many others. Um, and I hear from uh, Commissioner Ellis, Rodney Ellis in Houston. I think his funeral will be, I believe, in Houston tomorrow, and then I think the burial. And I think they have a memorial service tomorrow. And I think the burial will be in Amarillo on the 16th. Now, I, I don't know why he's not going to the state cemetery, uh, but maybe that was a personal choice. Maybe that's where his mother and father are. Yeah. So, um, but I understand it will be in Amarillo and it will be on the 16th. Thank you. Okay, so we'll take up our one item today, which is consider and take appropriate action on Travis County declaration of local, declaration of local disaster due to April 8, 2024 solar eclipse and any related county response. And uh, so earlier today, I issued the Travis County disaster declaration to ensure a safe and successful enjoyment of the April 8th eclipse. Um, we're in the path of total of totality of the eclipse and this disaster declaration is going to allow our first responders who we'll hear from here in a second and public safety officials to better manage traffic and crowds as we anticipate the population to potentially double in size in Travis County, potentially, uh, through the days leading up to and including the day of the eclipse. We wanna make sure that everyone can safely enjoy the eclipse in our very beautiful Travis County, especially the parks in the western part of it. Commissioner Howard, um, under this disaster declaration that I entered earlier today, private property owners in the unincorporated areas of Travis County will be required to notify the county if they plan to host a gathering with more than 50 people to watch the eclipse. And there's a form that our fire marshal put up, it's traviscountytx.gov slash total solar eclipse. And so make sure to get some cool solar eclipse glasses and prepare for this. And we're gonna hear from our, some of our county staff and law enforcement about why we did this and kind of a little more background. So Eric, I'll Just, yes, if I could, um, I, uh, I had a meeting with the superintendent of the Austin Independent School District this morning and, and uh, he just wanted to make sure that he understood the nature of the declaration 
and that it might not adversely impact the students that will that often that are at school every day and and often at school and that's where they get their breakfast lunch and sometimes their dinner so uh, if 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 we could talk a little bit about how we expect school districts to be impacted uh, and uh, or whether and maybe they won't be but but just that we've given that thought and we are communicating uh, with the school districts so they know what they can and cannot do during school hours. Sounds good. So what are we doing, Eric? Judge, yeah, thank you. Uh, I got uh, a few folks up here with me and I'll, I'll ask them to chime in when it's appropriate. Bottom line is that the, des the, the disaster declaration is just helping the Travis County access the tools we, will, we need to be better prepared as best we can for the unexpected surge of folks that, that may come to our area for the eclipse. So uh, specifically related to the uh, registration of places of folks or 50 or more, it's to help their first responders get an understanding of where there may be gatherings. So if there are problems in those areas, we have that anticipation and we can put the appropriate level resources. There's some other areas that, that, that'll assist us with as we work towards the eclipse event, but that's the primary one. Part of our planning, and, and, and as it's been ongoing for, for several months now, has been reaching out uh, to the school districts and understanding how they're going to behave and, uh, as far as being open or closed. Most of the school districts uh, on the west side, uh, I believe, are modifying operations. Most on the east side are not. They're taking it as an educational opportunity, and, um, and that's to encourage them uh, as such. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and just slip through the slides real fast, just so you know. Uh, the key issues that we face here is the large impacts, as, as we said, of the crowds that we anticipate to the area. That loading uh, traffic, um, the load on even utilities could be significant. So we've been working with our partners. Uh, I have uh, Jay, uh, Chief Alexander here with Travis County Parks. They're going to be a, a central host for a lot of activity. There are others going on. But just to make, A, build awareness around what those impacts could be, B, and helping to put those special measures they have to, they need to put in place to ensure that the crowds that do show up at those parks have a, a safe outing for that event. They can get there uh, uh, efficiently and, of course, leave safely when the uh, eclipse is over. Um, uh, to that end, uh, also we have our PIO here, Hector. He's been helping with uh, Hector Nieto. Has been chief in, in, in making sure we get those message, the message out to the public. I'll stop there. Jay, why don't you just take a minute and just talk a little bit about the preparedness that's been going on in the parks, and then we'll we'll pass it on to Hector and talk about some of the messaging that we've been putting out to the public. Sure. Our plan all along has been public safety and resource protection for Travis County Your Parks. Chief Alexander. Yes, sir. Parks Police here. Yes, sir. County. I forgot. It's all about that. But anyway, our plan all along has been public safety and resource protection for Travis County Parks. Part of that is not only what occurs inside the parks, but in the lead up to the parks. To that end, we have been working extensively with our wonderful partners at TCSO, at the varying constables offices, um, AC, ATCMS, Starflight, you name it. They all have stepped up, offered uh, substantial advice within TNR itself. Uh, not only has parks uh, contributed greatly, but the public works as well. The GIS group is doing a substantial amount of work for us as we speak to develop the travel plans that we're anticipating that we're gonna need. Thank you. Chief. Hector? Hector Nieto, Director of Public Information Office. Uh, our office has been uh, actively communicating out uh, to the public uh, using uh, various methods on social media and in direct partnership with our, uh, with our uh, friends at, in the press. Uh, we are encouraging the public to plan ahead for any congestion throughout the, uh, throughout the event. We also are encouraging them to reschedule any non-urgent appointment that day. Uh, if you're if you're going to the dentist, that's uh, just routine. Schedule it for a week later, or even the week before, if you can. Uh, we're also encouraging the local public uh, to stock up on your groceries and your gas the, the 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 few days before. That way, you're not having to run out that Monday during the actual eclipse itself. Um, and then last, also, if you do plan to go out uh, on the day of the eclipse to go watch it, do so with time. Uh, with caution, uh, if you are going to be at one of the many either uh, 
one of your local parks, whether it's county or state, uh, download uh, What Three Words. It's an app that allows you to, that helps you uh, identify your location in case of an emergency. So can Je I put my dental appointments off altogether? You can blame me for that one, <laughs> sir. You, got it. you still got to do that. Judge, as a, as a, as a final thought, uh, again, all of our planning is leading to that day. We plan on being uh, active both that Sunday and that Monday in the joint city of Austin, Travis County Mercy Operations Center with staff in place, uh, connected to our other municipal partners and emergency management agencies across the county. We're all going to be having a watch party from that location and being ready to, to support them if they're, if anything breaks. But we expect to have a nice, perfect day with a nice, perfect crowd, and, uh, but we're gonna be ready if it doesn't turn out that way. Sounds good. Um, any questions, Commissioner Trevelyan? No, I still wanna get out of the dentist appointment. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm good other than that. Right on, Commissioner Howard. I knew you and my mom had something in common. <laughs> now I know what it is. Um, so there had been talks of other restrictions, like on the west side. Are we not closing roads and that kind of stuff? Uh, right now, there are no active plans to close roads, Commissioner. I mean, really, the objective of law enforcement is to uh, uh, free flow traffic as best as possible, right? So we want to make sure, even when we were talking specifically around potential challenge points going into and out of the parks, the goal is going to be to keep the traffic moving uh, as free flow as possible. We want to be prepared if anything impedes the road. That's what we're trying to uh, put resources in place for, to direct traffic, extra extra law enforcement on the streets out in those areas, extra signage, mm -hmm. uh, working with Waze and Google to try to pre-identify pre and, and map routes that people can take safely into and out of the area. So um, if we have to, that, uh, well, I don't want to say speculate. The goal is not to close roads if we don't have to. Right, good. Um, I talked to um, Bob Ayers of the Shield Ranch this morning and they are planning an event. So, you know, I think we've got to, I'm not sure how we're going to communicate to property owners about, because right now it just sounds like you just are asking them to let you know yes. where people are going to be, parties of 50 or more. Um, I think, you know, if we need help from property owners, um, they're, they're always gracious. They already volunteered if we need their space or something to let them know. Um, but, you know, I just don't want us to do anything that messes up the traffic flow, um, <laughs> you know, out of extra caution or something. I think um, it's, Commissioner, it's, it's, it's all about the expectations with the traffic, right? Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot, right. and it won't necessarily be... Uh, a first responder that's the issue It's the volume of the traffic i do know if i'm correct and, and the, the gentleman here can help me but i believe text dots even going to stop construction on those on major state roads in and in and around that area i believe our county folks if they have any constructions it's going to be done for that range too so it won't be us building on a road and putting cones that are having problems it's it's really going to be the volume that we're keeping an eye on okay and then are you cooperating or collaborating with the constables and the sheriff's office? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. We're going to put them in, we're going to put them to work. All right. <laughs> well, they need to know what what y'all are envisioning so they can be ready. Yes. Please. Chief Alexander has talked to TCSO about all that and the, the constables. Yes, that's correct. We um, will actually be taking over, I guess you could say, two constables' offices for the day. <laughs> three, CN3 and CN5 uh, effectively gave us their offices for that day. Uh, CN1, CN4 uh, are contributing smaller amounts for the east side of the county. In addition to, the, to that, the uh, Travis County Sheriff's Department has stepped up exponentially, not only to keep the traffic flow going at the volume that it should on the roadways, but they have gone out of their way to assist parks to make sure that our park environment is one that's gonna be enjoyable for the visitors. And Commissioner, any changes in operations uh, throughout the county will be announced uh, through the Public Information Office, uh, uh, through a traditional press release and also on our social media accounts. Uh, we also do have a total solar eclipse webpage, which is traviscountytx.gov slash total solar eclipse. Um, we have also sent uh, each of your offices 
uh, already uh, the links that posted today uh, to those social media posts. Uh, and those posts do have a significant amount of information that we encourage you to share with any constituents that may have uh, questions. Great. All right, and so uh, Chief Alexander, so with the parks, we've got uh, reservations. We're doing reservations for the eclipse. Yes, sir. The reservations for Hamilton Pool, sadly, are full. So no yes, one else sir. can go there. If you don't have, have a reservation, you cannot go there on this day. Same with, I believe, Rand, uh, Arkansas Bend. Arkansas Bend. Pace Bend. And Pace Bend, same deal. Uh, they, you opened up reservations to the public and they filled up. There may be some coming sometime soon for one other park, but if you don't have a reservation, the word is you cannot visit a county park in western Travis County for the eclipse without a reservation. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That is correct, and all of the overnight reservations are, are booked up. Okay, terrific. And um, where, Hector, do people go for the... Um, to register if they're having an event of 50 people or larger? The, the registration can be found on the, on the Total Solar Eclipse webpage. Um, it is currently being updated. Our web team was uh, updating it once the press release went out. Uh, so it should be up and going. If it already isn't, it should be up shortly. Okay, and that's on the Travis County? TravisCountyTX.gov slash Total Solar Eclipse. Okay, and so that's where people should go like Bob Ayers, uh, if you're having an event over 50 people. And of course, if your event gets to 2,500 people, you, there's a whole other set of normal regulations, correct, that you have to register and get approval from the fire marshal's office and from the court and the judge. So don't, don't get too crazy there. Um, <laughs> all right, any other questions, court members? I, did you get your question about the school districts? Well, um, have, I, I just want to know what our policy is or, or how we have instructed uh, school districts, what we expect of them. Uh, we are not instructing school districts. That it's, it's as, as districts, they can make the choice on what schools are open and closed. We are coordinating with them to understand their operational plans, talk to all the districts already, so we've got a, a, a good list of who plans to be open and who plans to be closed. Okay, all right. That, that's good enough for me. If we're coordinating with and, and, and have not put together a, rule, a set of operating procedures oh, for them, uh, then yeah. I think that they'll be in good shape. Yes, sir. Excellent. Judge, uh, yes, sir. Commissioner Blake Clamford, Chief Deputy, just wanted to add also that um, we've got spring break next week. Many of y'all won't be here. I don't think we're having court. But each week after that, leading up to the eclipse, we're planning to come back uh, and give updates. And then after the eclipse, also uh, a wrap up. Great. Report, tell you how great everything went. <laughs> Sounds fun. Can't wait. Um, all right. Maybe, maybe you could bring doctor's orders for all dentists. <laughs> <laughs> activities that day. So, so they don't have to go. All right. Uh, any other questions, y'all? I don't think we have any commenters from the public today. Uh, any motions? We need to approve this item. Yes. Robert Armistead. Oh. Robert. Robert Armstead with Travis County Parks. Yes, I, I think it may have been clarified um, when, when I was walking up, but uh, the Hamilton Pool is, is full for the reservations and camping at Pace Bend and Arkansas Bend are full, but the day use for Arkansas Bend, Pace Bend, and Rymers will open on Monday. They'll day, open For on day use only. What time? Um, <laughs> 8, 8, 8 a.m. All right, get your, your buttons it. ready. Um, okay, so 8 a.m. on this upcoming Monday, the, kind of the last reservations for parks in Western right. Travis County. And that'll be on the, what, Travis County TX? It will, uh, my office will send out information uh, via press release and also on social media, uh, but it'll be off of the parks website. Terrific. All right. Could you just pause a second? Sure. Commissioner Shea is asking a question, but I'm not sure what her question is. Okay. Uh, we can still take questions after we... Okay. And could you remind us what exactly, what our vote does? So the vote today, so the way our system in Texas is set up, the county judge, that is me in this case, can order uh, things like I ordered earlier today, a disaster declaration. And then the commissioner's court, to extend the time of that happening within seven days, I believe, has to take a vote here to extend that on. So since we're making the declaration today, 
it's going to be in effect until the 8th, because we're requiring that registration and those other measures until the 8th, um, the court ratifying that today will keep it into effect. So in that, effect. that will be my motion. Okay. Motion from Commissioner Trevelyan. Second. Second from Commissioner Howard. And I have a question. And you have, go ahead. Are we considering, like, closing the county operations um, because there will be school for lots of families and we'll all want to be outside? As far as I know, there will be school. Like uh, Matias Segura said, there will be school. They're t taking it kind of as an educational opportunity. Okay. We can make that call later. As of now, we do not have plans to close operations. In fact, we're going to have the emergency operations center open that day. Um, so, and, and Judge, it's also, I think, important to point out, particularly in our Title I environments, uh, that's where 60% you know, or more of their kids get free and reduced lunch. So it's important to keep the normal operations to the extent that we can. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, so a couple more weeks to think through that, but as of now, my understanding is they're going to stay open. I don't, I think Del Valley, last I heard, is still open. I haven't heard of any other cancellations. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion, court members? All those in favor? That passes unanimously. All right, thank you all very much. Thanks for being thank here. Thank you, sir. So we will go ahead and adjourn today with no further business at 2.26 p.m. Thank you. <laughs>